How's it going everyone, Vlad here with SolusPLC.com and in today's quick tip video we are discussing tag aliasing. So I'm going to be showing you how to alias tags, why this practice is being deployed all over the manufacturing facilities and then some of the counter arguments as to why you should not be using tag aliasing. Without any further delay, let's get started. So to understand why tag aliasing is being used primarily is if we scroll down to an input card which is listed on the ethernet block right here in our PLC and we select one of the input modules you'll notice that this tag is being called point IO rack one uh, input and that's based on the name that we gave to that uh, specific card. So if we go into controller scope tags you can find the tags for that specific card under the name that was given to that card. So here, if I expand it, these are going to be all the inputs for that card, which is eight inputs. Now, what's going to be a little bit tricky or confusing for the programmer is these non-defined names. So you don't really know if this is tied to a push button, a switch, a photo eye, or any other device in the field. So what people have gotten used to is creating alias tags that will be replacing these point IO rack tags. Now the point IO rack tags, as you can see here, are already an alias to the data points. But what you can do here is, and I'm showing you an example of how to alias a tag. If I create an XIC instruction, I can say, for example, photo I1 conveyor conveyor 50, uh, 34 and that's going to be the identifier for that specific input so what I would typically do is right click this new photo i1 conveyor 34 and again may not be the best practice but this is one of the ways that you can use this so type is going to be alias instead of base and here we can select that specific tag that we've got above instead of uh, the uh, the original input tag. So we're going to scroll down and once again we're going to see the same exact tags. So we should find point IO rack one one and then it's going to be input and we can select the zeroth bit since this is a boolean and that's going to be PLC scoped. I just want to make sure that it's the same. Click on create and as you can see I can use that tag exactly as I would the point IO rack one tag in my previous example. Of course here we can Put the exact exact same tag and that's going to be energizing this local bit uh, zero I'm just going to use something let's see here something different so we don't have any problems i don't believe that there's going to be enough of them okay so that's an alias tag now to our input point. Now, what is the problem with this? Well, the problem is that you're starting to get confused by the name. So first of all, you can create as many alias tags to that original tag as you'd like. So this could be photo I1, conveyor 34. A second person comes in, creates another rung, and then creates an XIC instruction. And this is, for example, if the system has been re rewired, now this is valve set on for example so somebody creates another tag and they're going to alias this back to the same exact input and so you st you're starting to get leftovers of previous tags that have already been used in your program and again there's obviously good practices that can avoid this type of behavior and if you are careful with what you're putting in then in theory this shouldn't happen but the system does allow you to create multiple alias tags to the same input card and that's very important to consider now what i typically recommend and what's been changed since factory uh so since studio 5000 version 20 is that comments are being left on the plc memory so in the past if you were to for example right click this and give this a description so this could be my photo i again one conveyor 34 and you were to lose this program and upload from the PLC, you would lose that description because it was being saved in the program file. Now, what has been changed, as I was saying, since version 20, is that the comments are now being saved on the PLC, which means that you no longer really need to create alias tags. What you can do is, instead of aliasing this, you could just put a comment on your tag, and then this will be saved on the PLC side. And if you are consistent with using the base tags, then you shouldn't have any problem cross-referencing that same tag. 
The other thing that I want to illustrate is, as I mentioned, since you go, you're going to use multiple tags, if you cross-reference, right-click and then select go to cross-reference for that specific tag, you'll notice that there's going to be several tags being used. So this becomes very confusing, although it does cross-reference all the instances of the alias tag, it becomes very confusing to non I would say expert programmers because the reference is going to be different. So here you got a Pon.io rack one tag. And for some reason here you have a photo I one tag. So it could be very misleading, especially for people who are troubleshooting and don't have extensive experience on how tags are alias. And like I said, as a conclusion, I personally prefer comments above your tags. So if you leave a comment with what the tag truly means, it's very easy to find. It's very easy to understand and if the point IO changes so in the previous example if it's rerouted to a different piece of hardware it's really easy to come back and say this changed from a photo eye so this is valve I don't know 45 status on and there you go so it's going to update the tag description on all of your tags which it doesn't do with alias tags so as you can see these are the exact same tags they're pointing to the exact same memory location and at this point this alias tag still says photo i1 conveyor 34 while this one says valve 44 uh, 485 status on in the description in any case that's all i have for you today and i'll see you next time